Robert Chandler was a bit of a nut. Um, he, he was a wildly imaginative designer and decorator. Uh, indeed, I don't really think there's anybody who was sort of getting the kinds of commissions that he was getting in his time who was doing stuff that was more, how shall I put it, fanciful than what he was doing. And uh, for Gertrude's studio, he, among other things, created this extraordinary fireplace and chimney, which is made out of plaster, and as you can see, is designed as tongues of flame rising to the ceiling. It's now painted white. We believe that originally it was not. Um, but um, to my knowledge, I'm not, well, I'm not sure we know what the original colors of it were, but even painted white, it's just a sight to behold. And as you can see, I have a number of photographs of it. Um, the sculpture of the flames is Grammy, what a great idea for a fireplace, huh? And then, as those flames rise up to the ceiling, they resolve into this uh, very uh, elaborate patterning in plaster that covers the ceiling, that features fanciful birds and beasts and sea creatures and dragons and flora and fauna of various kinds, which, uh, again, you can see in this photograph and here and here. So, now, her studio is a two-story high space. Those are hay loft doors that you see at the top. And uh, the entirety of the ceiling is covered by this uh, fantastic bas-relief work by Robert Chandler. This is the outside and this is the inside. Now, um, a little bit before that, Gertrude uh, actually had another architect, a man named Grosvenor Atterbury. Uh, make some uh, changes to her stable and to the adjoining house on 8th Street that had become the Whitney Studio. In order to connect Gertrude's studio on the alley with the office of Juliana Force, whom Gertrude put in charge of the Whitney Studio and all the subsequent institutions that the two women founded. Atterbury created this enclosed external staircase, which you can still see today, both outside and in. I mean, it's no great masterpiece or anything, but it is notable that it was done by Atterbury, who was one of the most important architects in New York's history, who simultaneous with the work that he did on Gertrude's studio was also designing Forest Hills Gardens in Queens, which is one of the most uh, important works of its time. Now, switching back for a second to Robert Chandler, if you're interested in seeing more of the work that he did, there is his own home and studio at 147 East 19th Street. You can't, unfortunately, go in unless, I guess, you know, you're friends of the owners. But on the outside, you can see the wonderful relief of giraffes over the doorway of Chandler's studio. And if you go to Miami to a house called Vizcaya, which is just about the greatest house in America, uh, you can see the swimming pool grotto that Robert Chandler created. As I say, his work did not fit into any um, sort of preconceived mold of the time. Really pretty wild stuff. 